So, in this part of the lecture, I will basically talk about uh, reconfiguration of power distribution networks. Okay. So, uh, I, I kept this is on uh, uh, module 6, uh, but this is something different, this topic is bit different than uh, power distribution system planning. Okay. So, uh, uh, I will discuss uh, this different aspects of reconfiguration starting with what is uh, power distribution network reconfiguration. But before I should tell you that this is this topic is one research paradigm. Okay. So, this is uh, one area of research in which uh, many people are working okay. and uh, there are uh, hundreds of paper, thousands of paper you can get on power system reconfiguration uh, most uh, uh, importantly that power distribution network reconfiguration. And here I will try to give you a glimpse of this idea that what is the research going on uh, this power distribution network re reconfiguration. Okay. So, let us start. Okay. Now, first question is what is reconfiguration? What do you mean by reconfiguration? So, reconfiguration is basically a change of network topology or structure. Okay. And this uh, reconfiguration may be varied with uh, manual or automatic switching operations. Okay. And this change in network reconfiguration, so basically in one word the reconfiguration of distribution network is to change this network structure of topology by uh, changing the status of uh, sectionalizers and tie switches. Okay. As you have seen uh, in my last lecture, I was talking about uh, the placement for uh, sectionalizing switches and tie lines. Okay. And as you know that sectionalizers or sectionalizing switches uh, are normally uh, closed switches, okay. they are normally closed switches okay. and uh, their operation can be either manual or automatic. Okay. And tie lines are normally open switches. Okay. So, we have a number of sectionalizing switches and a number of tie lines in a typical distribution network. Okay. And uh, in my last lecture, I have shown you uh, some uh, examples of 154 node systems uh, by placing these sectionalizing switches and tie lines in different locations. Okay. So, that was part of this power distribution network planning, because our goal was there how to locate, how do we locate these sectionalizing switches and how do we locate this uh, tie, tie switches or tie lines. Okay. So, the locating some device optimally is a part of distribution net system planning, okay. but here our goal is effective uh, usage of those uh, sectionalizers and those tie switches such that uh, you get a desired objective fulfilled. Okay. Uh, so, it is a kind of operational uh, optimization. So, here I do not need any sort of capital investment as such because we are assuming that a network is equipped with uh, sectionalizing switches a network is equipped with tie lines or tie switches and uh, our here our goal is to optimally determine the status of the tie uh, switches and uh, the sectionalizing switches. Okay. So, as you can see that uh, uh, sectionalizers uh, are normally, uh, normally uh, closed switches, but we can open it if we uh, have any necessity. Similarly, tie lines are normally uh, open switches, but we can close them when the situation demands. So, the status of uh, sectionalizing switch can be on and off. Similarly, uh, the status of, of a tie line can be on and off. Now, 
uh, here in the reconfiguration on distribution networks, uh, we will optimally determine the uh, status for uh, sectionalizing switch and tie line, so that it can result in the change of network topology. So, how do we change the network topology? I will come to that. Okay. So, reconfiguration is basically the change of uh, network configuration uh, by opening the sectionalizing switch and closing the tie switches, closing the tie switches or tie lines. Okay. Now, all the demand, uh, so one uh, constraint of this reconfiguration is that all the demand should be met during the reconfiguration. That means, whichever load was connected uh, before the network is reconfigured, those many loads should be connected and they these will get supplied. Okay? And uh, that is the one of the constant and also the radiality of the operation of the network will be uh, remain intact. So, this is another constant that we will keep the network topology as such radial as similar to this uh, uh, planning problem. Okay? Now, this is a typical 33 node system where you can get a idea that uh, what is reconfiguration and what is the goal of the reconfiguration. So, in that network you can see there are many non uh, many sectionalizers and this sectionalizers locations are marked with these numerals which are kept within this parenthesis. So, these are the locations of sectionalizers. So, these are the locations of sectionalizers. So, these are the locations of sectionalizers. So, these are section. So, these are the locations for sectionalizers which are predefined which are already planned. So, these are the locations for sectionalizers which are predefined which are predefined. So, these are the locations of sectionalizers. Okay. So, how many sectionalizers we have here? We have in this particular lateral we have 1, 2, 3, 4 sectionalizers. In the main trunk feeder we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sectionalizers. So, total 10 and in this lateral we have another sectionalizers located in between nodes 19 and 20. Okay. So, total all together we have 11 sectionalizers. So, 11 numbers of sectionalizing switches, 11 numbers of sectionalizing switches that you can see. Okay. And in addition to that we have some tie switches, we have some tie switches which are marked with this these are tie switches, these are tie switches. Okay. So, how many tie switches we have? We have 5 tie switches. So, these are the tie switches or intra feeder uh, tie lines, intra feeder tie lines. So, we have 5 numbers of intra feeder tie lines, 5 numbers of intra feeder tie lines okay. and they are normally open switches, they are normally, normally open switches. Whereas, uh, you can see that uh, the sectionalizers are normally closed switches. Okay. So, in this example you can see we have 11 number of uh, you know sectionalizing switches which are normally closed switches and we have uh, five numbers of uh, uh, intra feeder tie lines or tie switches. Why I am calling it intra feeder tie lines? Because uh, as I have seen that uh, 
normally tie lines are kept uh, uh, to tie between the adjacent feeders. Okay. But here this is a single feeder network as you can see. So, uh, these switches can be called as intra feeder tie lines or uh, it can be simply called as tie switches. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of these tie switches? The purpose of these tie switches is that we can close these tie switches we can close this tie switches, tie switches as soon as you close the tie switch for example, if you close this tie switch then what will happen then the, uh, this the here you can see there would be a loop formed okay. and in order to maintain the radiality of the network I need to open either this normally closed switch or sectionalizer or this normally closed switch so that this loop will get loop will break okay and thereby the radiality of the operation uh, radiality operation of the network will uh, remain intact okay and that is what our goal for uh, doing this reconfiguration so in that case uh, this uh, power of this uh, this 15 by node number 15 will come through this 9 via this tie switch okay and there will be a break in this loop either by opening of this 12 number uh, switch um, and indicated by number numeral 12 or by uh, opening this sectionalizer indicated by uh, numeral 14. So, this is the main goal for uh, reconfiguration. Okay. In reconfiguration, we purposefully change the network topology or network structure in order to achieve certain goals. Okay. Now, what are the goals you will get by doing uh, this type of reconfiguration? These are mentioned over here that why should we change the network structure or network topology? You can look at this, uh, uh, these are the goals or these are the benefits that one can draw from this reconfiguration of distribution network. What are the benefits? One benefit is power loss reduction. Okay. So, we can reduce the power loss of the whole network. Uh, power loss of the whole network means uh, it is the sum total of the uh, losses uh, taking place in uh, different distribution uh, lines or distribution branches. So, if we get that overall power loss of the network or sum total of the power loss gets reduced then we can obviously go for this reconfiguration. Okay. So, one of the benefits or one of the goal to achieve this reconfiguration is to uh, reduce the power loss. Okay. Second is, is to improve the bus voltage. So, sometimes you have seen that uh, I, have, I have shown you the bus voltage profile uh, in module 4 and you have seen the farthest nodes uh, of a distribution network suffer from uh, this under voltage problem because uh, of this voltage drop. Okay. Now, uh, by doing this reconfiguration we can alleviate, we can uh, reduce the over maximum voltage drop of a particular feeder or we can improve the bus voltages of the farthest nodes okay, by changing the path. Similarly, we can improve the reliability and we can also improve the system security particularly voltage stability. Okay. Now, the network reconfiguration is essentially a optimization problem. So, similar to power distribution network planning, uh, power distribution network reconfiguration is essentially an optimization problem. Uh, since it is an optimization problem, uh, we, we can formulate this we either with a single objective optimization problem or multi objective optimization problem. And now, as you know the single objective optimization problem is having with only one objective function which we need to make, uh, optimize under certain constants. Okay. And in multi objective optimization problem, we have multiple objective functions which we need to simultaneously optimize under certain constants. Okay. So, this problem can be formulated either by single objective or multi objective problem. 
Now, what are the challenges we have uh, in this reconfiguration problem? Uh, it is an example of extremely large combinatorial problem, where uh, suppose we have a distribution network having 10 numbers of uh, or 10 or 11 numbers of uh, normally uh, closed switch and uh, 5 or 6 numbers of normally open switch. Now, in order to determine the optimal combination uh, for uh, switching status, so, so as to achieve uh, the certain goal or certain goals is a kind of combinatorial optimization problem and uh, there might be a huge number of combination exist. So, that is one of the uh, you know complexity of solving this particular problem. Similarly, we have to estimate so, this needs a first lost estimation technique and the repeated and continuous evolution of this configuration. Okay. Now, what are the motivations behind this uh, network reconfiguration problem? Uh, particularly in uh, present era or in future era, where we are expecting that our networks will be equipped with more communication system, advanced communication system, a better way of measurements and also uh, it will be connected to uh, this information and communication system then uh, this whole thing should be more practical uh, to or more practically feasible uh, to use. For example, as you have seen that distribution networks are gradually having a growing penetration of distributed generation units. These things I will talk about my next module and also it is uh, going to be equipped with more number of add more advanced information and communication techniques ICT and also availability of meta heuristic optimization techniques which can solve a large combinatorial problem with a uh, given degree of accuracy. Okay. So, those are the motivation factors uh, for uh, doing research in this particular uh, domain. Okay. Now, traditionally the, as I said already we have a uh, quite volume of literature for uh, distribution network reconfiguration problem and there are several objective, fun objective functions formulated in different uh, approaches or different journal and conference papers. Uh, this includes this maximization of service restoration which is somewhat uh, uh, similar to a reliability objective. So, maximization of service restoration is somewhat uh, similar to maximization of reliability of the network, maximization of reliability of the network. Okay. Of course, this uh, power loss or minimization or energy loss minimization is an important objective that we should consider for solving any type of distribution system planning or reconfiguration problem. Similarly, uh, sometimes this reconfiguration is done in order to balance the loads among different transformers in a particular under a particular substation. And also uh, this uh, reconfiguration problem is exercised in order to reduce the overloading of the feeders and uh, the transformers under in a particular substation. And while doing this reconfiguration, there is a one important thing that many people consider which is minimization of the switching cost and the number of switching uh, in a particular day or in a particular time period, which is very, very essential because the switching uh, of this normally open switch and closed switch will associate with certain uh, amount of cost. Also, this voltage stability is another objective uh, many in which is considered in many of the papers or many of the approaches. And these objectives are optimized under certain technical constants. One is of course, power balance constant which is an example of equality constant 
that you have seen in, in case of uh, distribution system planning. Okay. So, what is power balance constant? It is uh, to balance uh, the power demand of the loads and the power uh, supplied uh, through the substation. Okay. So, this is obviously uh, uh, something that one should ensure and uh, this is normally ensured through, through the use of uh, this load flow or forward backward sweep load flow if this uh, network operates in radial. Okay. Similarly, bus voltage constant is there. So, we have to keep this uh, node voltage or bus voltage in a typical distribution network uh, within a minimum and maximum limits. So, this is something one needs to uh, understand and these are the example of inequality constant, inequality constant. Okay. Similarly, thermal limit of line it is also an inequality constant, radiality of line should be intact, this is also inequality constant and if there is any distributed generation unit, then uh, its uh, penetration is also another constant uh, which is considered in different products, this is a kind of inequality constant. So, similar to uh, power distribution system planning, here also we have a number of equality and inequality constants and our goal would be to optimize the objectives or multiple objectives under these constants. Okay. So, this is a essence, this is also essentially an optimization problem. So, here you can see some of the examples of single objective optimization formulation which are done in different work. So, minimization of energy loss is as I have shown you is one of the objective functions formulated in many of the papers. In fact, most of the papers because this is also uh, a, a main this is an a main advantage of uh, doing a reconfiguration of a typical distribution network. Okay. And this is the mathematical expressions for minimization of energy loss where you can see this I square R of individual uh, feeder branch is considered and according to the status of these switches and this is minimized over a certain period of time and that will give you the minimization of energy loss. Okay. In fact, this should be uh, minimized with uh, t, t is equal to 1 to certain time horizon and all these thing will be this t is equal to it is starting from t is for to certain horizon and all this should be subscript t. Okay. Similarly, uh, minimization of financial losses due to voltage sack is considered to be another objective functions in a single objective optimization problem uh, for uh, this network reconfiguration and this include this, uh, this losses uh, due to this voltage sack which is also function of uh, the probability of particular load composition in a particular node and also probability of equipment failure cost associated with the tripping of the equipment or process. Okay. And there are uh, also many approaches reported which are multi objective optimization approaches in which several objective functions are considered and these objective functions are uh, optimized by considering a multi objective optimization approach. Okay. There are different multi objective optimization problems formulated which include different types of objective functions formulation for example, minimization of power lost, voltage drop, service interruption, frequency load balancing etcetera in one of the approaches. In another approach along with this minimization of power loss expected energy not supplied that is EENS uh, that is uh, similar to ENS which is taught in the reliability module. Uh, so, that uh, you, you know, by uh, reducing or by minimizing that ENS you can maximize the reliability of the network and also this several uh, other reliability indices considered for example, uh, system average interruption frequency index that is SIFI, 
system average interruption duration index that is psi d and average uh, service availability index that is a s a i all these indices uh, I have taught you in module 3. So, these indices are up, uh, reduced or these indices are minimized along with this power loss. So, that the network that uh, we are trying to get uh, after reconfiguration should be uh, or should have uh, a better reliability as well as uh, a reduced amount of power loss. Okay. Similarly, another approach in another approach along with this power loss minimization, because you can see power loss minimization is a common uh, objective used in most of the approaches, but apart from that uh, this number of interrupted customers per year that is also a kind of reliability objective is considered and these objectives are uh, minimized simultaneously. Similarly, this cost function and ENS is considered in one of the paper and uh, another paper along with this losses, this reliability uh, maximization by minimizing the total interruption cost uh, is considered. That means, this approach is similar to this optimization of energy loss as well as the cost and reliability. Okay. So, these are the sum of the works, uh, but this is not an exhaustive list. So, you may get different other works also, where different different uh, objective function formulations and, and different different uh, approaches used for solving those problem. Okay. And as you know in multi objective optimization problem, we have three different approaches. One is called weighted sum multi objective optimization approach already I explained uh, in couple of lectures a couple of last lectures. Also one is uh, fuzzy multi objective approach, where the concept of fuzzy uh, set theory is used or fuzzy membership function is used. Another is uh, Pareto based multi objective approach, which is taught in last two lectures. Okay. So, these are the traditional ways for handling this multi objective optimization problem. And uh, as you know, this is a typical approach uh, for uh, which can be categorized as weighted sum multi objective approach, where uh, different objective functions are uh, aggregated with weight. So, the here uh, this w this w i these are weights, weights assigned to different different objective functions, where which include power loss, which include E n s psi p psi d a s i. Okay. Uh, here uh, these objectives are of different objectives and they are aggregated with respective weights to in order to form a aggregated objective function. Similarly, in another uh, approach you can see this uh, along with this power loss that is P L, uh, this T L be the transformer load balancing is considered to be another objective. Uh, so, this index the T L B is basically uh, for balancing this transformer load and also there are different other objectives which are aggregated which include service interruption frequency, forced voltage drop or here in uh, means uh, the highest voltage drop is considered to be another objective which needs to be minimized along with this power loss. Similarly, this uh, balanced of service of important customers is another objective and all the objectives are aggregated with respective weights. So, w 1, w 2, w 3, w 4 and w 5 represent the respective weights for all these objective functions. Okay. This approach that fuzzy multi objective approach is a similar kind of aggregated uh, weighted and aggregated approach of or rather the similar kind of uh, approach where uh, this individual different objective functions are weighted uh, to form a aggregated optimization objective function. But here uh, why we call it fuzzy multi objective approach, here basically the one is main objective that is power loss minimization and other two are basically the constraints and these constraints are fuzzified uh, with a membership function. and 
it is aggregated they are aggregated with this main objectives that is uh, power loss and minimization of uh, number of switches number of switching operation. So, these are two main objectives which are aggregated with the constants uh, and these constants are represented by fuzzy membership function. Okay. So, this is one of the approaches uh, authors called as a multi fuzzy multi objective optimization approach. And as you know Pareto based multi objective optimization approach I discussed in detail in last two lectures where we will be using uh, simultaneous optimization of multiple conflicting objectives or multiple objective functions which conflict with each other. Okay. For example, uh, there are many objectives as you have seen which, uh, which are which can be categorized as cost function reliability objective and power quality based objectives. In fact, this uh, power loss minimization it is a kind of uh, cost optimization because uh, by minimizing this uh, ener cost uh, energy loss we are basically minimizing the expenditure of the utility. Okay. So, it, it is categorized as cost optimization and similarly you have seen different reliability indices are considered to be uh, different objective functions which include E N S, psi D psi P S A I etcetera these are uh, categorized as reliability objectives and there are some power quality based objectives and these objectives conflict with each other and Pareto based approach is basically used uh, to, to solve these objectives simultaneously okay. and Pareto dominance principle is used in order to find uh, a set of non dominated solution uh, which will not dominate or which you will neither dominate or not gets dominated by any other solution. And as you know a set of uh, non dominated solution or a set of optimal non dominated solution is called uh, Pareto optimal solution. And if you plot this Pareto optimal solution uh, we call this as a uh, Pareto front. Okay. Now, this is uh, the, this similar way we uh, have seen in the last few lectures that uh, people have used uh, this Pareto based approach uh, to solve different kinds of reconfiguration problem or different reconfiguration problems with different objective functions and different solution. Now, here we will talk about this approaches optimization approaches or solution approaches or solution solution strategies. Okay. Now, there are many types of solution strategies used uh, in uh, solving this reconfiguration problem and uh, we have categorized them uh, into four categories. One is uh, heuristic approach, another is meta heuristic approach, another is mathematical optimization based approach, another is hybrid approach which uses uh, this different combination of mathematical approach and meta heuristic approach. Okay. And this classification tree will give you a glimpse of different approaches used in solving this reconfiguration problem. Uh, you can see that one uh, you know category belong to this artificial intelligence based approach which include fuzzy based approach as well. Another is a heuristic based approach which is nothing but trial and error method or problem specific heuristics used for solving this problem. Another category is meta heuristic approach which is a bigger category where uh, different uh, types of meta heuristic approaches used which can be uh, classified uh, into two group one is population based approach another is point search technique. So, this is uh, point point search technique and this population based is basically multi point multi point search technique and under this population based uh, approach uh, you get evolutionary algorithms for example, genetic algorithm evolutionary programming or maybe particle sum optimization and colony harmonic search artificial B and so on. 
and so forth. So, there are many uh, you know metaheuristic approaches reported last few years and uh, there are many uh, papers where you can find these approaches are used in solving this reconfiguration problem. So, here you can see a basic algorithm for reconfiguration problem uh, for solving this reconfiguration problem, which is one of the uh, you know first kind of solution strategy for reconfiguration problem published in 1989 long time ago more than 40 years ago and uh, it is uh, proposed by these authors. And according to this algorithm, uh, it is an iterative algorithm where step wise different operations are mentioned. Step 1 is uh, reading this data, then step 2 is to uh, close all these uh, normally open switches or all these tie switches thereby this will create a mesh network and then convert these loads to the nodal injections and uh, perform this power flow. Then determine this flow pattern of the network or power flow pattern of the network. Then heuristically open the switch which is carrying the lowest current or lowest power flow okay. and close this last uh, switch open and open the switch carrying the next lowest current and so on. So, in step 7 a uh, constant violation is checked if there is any constant violation then uh, we will go to step 9 otherwise step 6 will be repeated okay. and in step 10 uh, we can see that it is a result of a radial network this will print the result. So, basic philosophy of this algorithm is by closing all these tie switches uh, a radial network is fastly converted to a uh, mesh network okay. and thereafter power flow is performed and after performing the power flow the uh, branch or line carrying the lowest current or lowest power flow is identified and it is uh, kept open and uh, we will repeat the process un until and unless that uh, the network becomes a radial network. Okay. This is a one of the you know uh, first kind of approach for this solving this reconfiguration problem. But uh, there are several other uh, approaches available. For example, in this paper, you can see a genetic algorithm based approach is used where uh, basically this state of this sectionalizing switches and tie switches are determined through uh, a genetic algorithm. Okay. And uh, 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 how this genetic algorithm works, etcetera, you need to study more bit on this particular solution aspect. Similarly, in another work uh, particle binary particle swarm optimization is used and their objective was to uh, increase the PB hosting capacity. This approach is used for active distribution networks. Now, what do you mean by active distribution network? When a distribution networks accommodate uh, certain distributed generation within it, then it becomes an active network. And uh, the objective function formulation is PV hosting capacity. PV stands for photovoltaic. Hosting capacity is basically a capacity of distribution feeder uh, of, uh, of withstanding or, or, or accommodating uh, the maximum amount of PV generation, which will not affect, which will not adversely affect uh, the network performance this I will discuss in detail what is PB uh, hosting capacity in the next module, but uh, this is a, a different objective functions is formulated uh, in order to identify uh, the states of the uh, or status of the tie switch and this uh, sectionalizing switch. Okay. And uh, it is solved by using binary particle uh, swarm optimization algorithm which is also taught in the last uh, lecture. Uh, it is a variant of particle swarm optimization, which can be used for those problems, which involve uh, binary decision variable or bi binary optimization variables. Okay. Now, I can show you a typical solution that is uh, provided by this particular paper. 
So, this is uh, a network topology before this uh, network reconfiguration operation is carried out and uh, this is a simple 33 bus network or 33 node network you have seen uh, many times. Okay. This is a case of single feeder network. So, this uh, at node 1 we have the substation and all other of uh, load nodes all other of load nodes. Okay. And here we have uh, these are the normally closed switches, these are the normally closed switches and the normally open switches are this, these are the normally open switches which I have shown you in the very beginning. And here are the goal is to identify the optimal status of those sectionalizing switches and uh, tie switches so that we can achieve a certain objective. One of the objectives is of, of course, this uh, power loss reduction or power loss minimization. Okay. So, after performing this reconfiguration approach, uh, it gets uh, this topology is changed to this topology which is shown in the uh, right half of this figure, where you can see some of the uh, normally uh, you know closed switches are opened. For example, this switches which are located at this branch 7, switches uh, which are located at here which is at branch 7 and one is here, another is somewhere here which is at branch 14. So, there are some switches which are normally closed switches are open and there are some normally open switch that is some of the tie switches are closed one is this one is this, one is this, okay. but uh, you can see and you can check the whole operation of the network or whole network remains radial. So, this network was remain radial and after reconfiguration also network remains radial. And this uh, you know reconfiguration operation is performed uh, under a certain loading condition under a certain loading condition and if the loading conditions uh, change, then obviously that uh, uh, this, this reconfiguration will no longer be optimal one and, and another reconfiguration problem needs to be initiated to find out the optimal uh, reconfigured network uh, for that particular loading condition. So, basically this uh, reconfiguration it depends upon the loading condition as well. Okay. And you here you can see that how this reconfiguration results in uh, this power loss reduction. Okay. So, before reconfiguration the power loss of the network was uh, 202.68 kilowatt and after reconfiguration power loss becomes 136.57 uh, kilowatt. So, it is almost in fact more than 30 percent reduction of power loss. So, 30 percent reduction of power loss. So, here to here we get 30 percent reduction of power loss, okay, which is very important, which is very important and particularly uh, during peak load condition when power loss is uh, also very high uh, due to the initiation of this uh, type of uh, reconfiguration approach, one can reduce a huge amount of energy loss, which amount of energy loss. Okay. And these are the branches which are kept open and of course, some of the tie switches are closed already I have shown. And uh, one thing uh, is also you can see that this minimum bus voltage which was 0 0.9131 uh, per unit, this also will get improved as the power loss is reduced or power loss reduced reduction means voltage drop reduction which improves the voltage profile as well. Okay. Now, these are the some new challenge for reconfiguration problem. One is a uh, stochastic environment stochastic environment. What do you mean by stochastic environment? Now, uh, due to this increased penetration or increased accommodation of this uh, different kinds of 
uh, non renewable sources like solar photovoltaic wind uh, turbine also with different types of loading like uh, plug in electric vehicles which are uh, charged in a typical charging station. So, this in uh, you know changed this network uh, distribution network operation completely ok and basically this generation of this photovoltaics wind turbine they are intermittent and therefore, they will uh, undergo a wide variation ok and similarly this uh, if we have any charging station in a typical distribution network it becomes a load whose behavior also is not completely known to us. When something is unknown and when something is intermittent then uh, we cannot use this normal approaches to solve this problem and we need to have some special approaches uh, which can handle this uncertainties which can handle some certain randomness and these are the some of the approaches like Monte Carlo simulation approach and some of the approaches uh, traditionally used or should would be exercised in uh, future investigation ok. Now, in this slide before I conclude or before I finish this part of the lecture you can see future research directions for uh, this uh, network reconfiguration problem. So, first of all to enhance network voltage stability and maximize the utilization of DG that is why you can see that uh, PV hosting capacity is uh, kept as one of the objectives in one of the approaches uh, I have explained ok. Because uh, the primary goal is nowadays uh, to integrate as much as or to utilize as much as uh, renewable energy sources as we can have. Okay. So, now considering this network reconfiguration problem needs to be formulated. Similarly, this uh, uh, optimal distribution network operation by taking into dynamic loads and DG distributor generation operation is another challenge ok. And uh, so, not only uh, for utilization of DG, but their uh, presence will make some operational challenges. Similarly, uh, real utilization of this algorithm for real time network reconfiguration because as I have uh, told you that network reconfiguration should be applicable or uh, for different loading conditions. So, it may so happen in a typical day we need to run it for several times depending upon the uh, predicted loading condition for next few hours and accordingly this optimal status of the switches should be determined and uh, they are they should be operated accordingly ok. Similarly, uh, this reconfiguration strategy along with this control voltage control and if we have any sort of reactive power compensators for example, capac capacitor bank if we have any storage like battery storage or if you have any voltage regulator then uh, this will uh, bring some additional challenges uh, in order to maintain these voltages or in order to control the voltages. Similarly, this uh, utilization of smart distribution network uh, by developing this different uh, mode of scheduling and transfer schemes. In fact, this I will discuss in my last module, this uh, you know bring some more challenges in uh, formulating this uh, distribution network reconfiguration problem ok. So, for uh, this uh, studying this reconfiguration problem one needs to search the uh, you know, papers available in the uh, literature uh, and you will simply search to get many papers available, but in order to form this part of the lecture I sincerely acknowledge of those uh, four papers. Uh, one is very uh, you know old one where you can see the first very early stage of reconfiguration approach is given. Another is a kind of review paper which is published in uh, 2017. Another is also a review paper published us uh, published in 2017. So, one uh, nowadays one gets number of papers on this particular aspect. Uh, a particular approach and uh, one needs to have a uh, 
uh, thorough study of the available approaches before initiating the research in this particular field. Okay. So, with this I will stop this uh, module that is module uh, 6. Uh, thank you very much for attending this lecture.